Urban Legacy Filmworks. I want to welcome you to a the start of a brand new show and online platform that I that just like popped up in my mind earlier today as just a tremendous epiphany. Uh, the name of this platform is called Brothers Stand Up. Uh, to let you know basically how this whole thing came about, um, I've been on social media now for quite a, a number of years, just like many of you. I've also been an avid watcher of YouTube. In fact, in the last few years, I think YouTube has pretty much um, become television for me. I rarely even watch regular TV anymore. I moved from a, a native of Buffalo, New York. I moved from Buffalo, New York to the, the DMV. I'm re currently residing in Maryland. And once I got here, um, I decided to do something different with my television watching habits. I I don't eat, I don't I, I have cable, but the only cable I have is internet. So all I have is a smart TV and I just watch apps all day. I've been doing that for the last past year or so. And I have to tell you, it's kind it's been not not just not not only has it saved me money, but mentally it has liberated me to <laughs> heights that I've never even imagined. Uh, but anyway, um, back to this platform. I've been an avid YouTube watcher, and um, I'm a fan of many of the YouTubers and content creators on there, from Tariq Nasheed to the Black Authority to Tyrone Magnus to all the brothers in the Black Manosphere, O'Shea, Obsidian, Angry Man, um, Alan Roger Curry. The list, the list goes on and on. You know who they all are. And the one thing that I noticed that tied much of that together, and then much of it has been stated over and over again in their in their uh, in a lot of their podcasts, is this concept of black male media. And you know that was something myself being being in media myself professionally for the past twenty five years little more than 25 now but that's uh, I've, I've myself have been a media creator as I am a documentary filmmaker and photographer and I've also been an independent journalist as well so I've done my own brand of um, media not so much black male media but media in black media in general and I've always throughout my career endeavored to always promote images, mainly positive images, of our people in the world of media. And I've been doing that ever since the 1990s. And um, recently, I made a couple posts, a few posts on my Facebook page, where I saw some really positive things going on in different communities by brothers, you know, and strangely, it's one of those things where something just, you just have that aha moment, you know? And it just comes to you like in a vision or in an epiphany that, you know, I've, I've, I've always toyed with the idea of becoming a, a major YouTuber, an, a, an avid, an active YouTuber myself, but I've kind of thought about it and thought against it. Cause, but, you know, I came up with different ideas, but this idea just came to me. And what I'm going to endeavor to do here is uh, promote and report on black men doing positive things in their community, throughout the country, and in different areas of the world. And I, I wrote like a, um, in a, on a couple of my posts, and I'm going to share them with you right here in this video, I typed in the comment section, brothers stand up and that's when it happened that could be my youtube platform right there is you know to highlight positive images of black men which it, let's be honest it's not something that we see often 
much of what you hear is negative. And, you know, as black men, we don't always get the play in the media, the proper positive play in the media that many of us deserve. And some, in most cases, you know, I myself am like this, sometimes we will do a lot of positive things out here, and usually we intentionally don't look for the, the attention. Sometimes we are low-key about it. So um, I'm going, what I endeavor to do here with this platform is to promote positive images of brothers all around the world. Now, I don't know how this is the first of its, of its kind, for, for coming for, from me, for this channel and for this platform. So first of its kind, I don't know how often I'm going to do it. I'll try to do it as often as possible. I'll try to be as consistent as I possibly can. But this is the first time it, it popped into my mind earlier today. And um, I thought I was going to kind of wait and do some, something later. But I said to myself, no, I did this little setup and I'm just going to jump. It's the beginning of 2020 and I'm going to just dive in head first and let's see where we wind up so that being said i'm not going to belabor that point anymore i'm going to share a couple of posts that i made on my facebook page i'm going to share them with you and read them to you and i'll if you want to more, know more information on these posts i'll leave you some links in the description box but this first one it was on facebook and you'll see the image in the video it was a Facebook post from Rashad Birdsong on January 2nd of 2020. And it's, it's, it reads, Black men collectively joining together in solidarity, pledging to protect their neighborhood in Baltimore from the inside and outside elements that put women and children at risk. It's a great example for black men to follow throughout the country. What greatness could we achieve when we put our egos in check for the greater cause of black people? And that is certainly a needed effort, not just in the Baltimore community, not just in the Buffalo community where I'm from, but in communities all over the country. You have situations right now where you have many young, young, many of our young girls being abducted and you've heard stories of them going missing and nobody seems to you know, you know, it doesn't get the press that it deserves. Nobody seems to really care. You know, there have been efforts here as well as some efforts in Buffalo um, that, that have been thwarted by brothers that when, when they see some, some harm being, some, a, a young female be, about to be abducted, I've, I've heard of a few stories where that's happened, where some brothers intervened and that whole situation ended. So I want to send a shout out and much respect to those brothers in Baltimore for their efforts. The other story that I would like to uh, share with you, I'm sure you're all familiar, of course, with the story of the Black Panther Party. And you know about the Black Panther leaders, Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, Eldridge Cleaver, but how much do many of you know about a brother by the name of Fred Hampton? that came out of the Chicago chapter, that, was on, that led the Chicago chapter at the age of 21 years old. He was one of my favorites, one of my all-time favorite leaders of the 1960s. And uh, I am elated that they are finally bringing his story to the big screen. Um, I'm also glad to know, very pleased to know, that Ryan Coogler is involved in the film as one of the producers. Um, you know that he was, he worked on, he was he directed Black Panther, um, Fruitvale Station, which talked about Os Oscar Grant and his murder, um, Creed, the two Creed films. So <laughs> you couldn't have found a better man for the job. And um, the article reads that the image, there's an, uh, one of the first images for the movie on the Black Panther Party's Fred Hampton has surfaced on Instagram, on the Instagram page of Lakeith Stanfield. Now, I'll share some of the article with you. Uh, Stanfield is said to play William O'Neill, who was the informant that gained Fred Hampton's trust, only to sell him out to the FBI. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya will be playing the role of Fred Hampton. You might remember him from the movie Get Out, as well as he was also in Black Panther. He played Wakabi. 
other stars include Ashton Sanders, Dominique Fishback, L.G. Smith. Um, the um, it also says here he talked. Stanfield talked about the project. State say he's quoted as saying, "I always wanted to be a part of a movie that spoke to the civil rights movement, in particular the Black Panther movement. It had a profound influence on me in my personal life, specifically." Fred Hampton, which this story centers around. So it's said to be in theaters later this year. So um, I'm sure as this year progresses, we'll find out more information. And I will personally be sure, as any, as any more new information arrives, I will be sure to bring it to you right here on this platform. Um, that's all I have for right now. I'm going to leave it, leave everything at that. I'll just tell you to certainly like the video, uh, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel, Urban Legacy Filmworks. Um, by all means, I certainly encourage you to look at many of the other videos that I have posted. Uh, you can also find me or follow me on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and uh, look up Urban Legacy Filmworks on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram under Urban Legacy Filmworks as well. And um, that's going to do it for me. I'm still, I'm, like I said, I just dove into this thing today. I got the idea today. I dove in today. So this is the start of 2020. This is the start of this new platform on my channel. Let's see where we go throughout the year 2020. Peace.